Hello everybody, today we're reviewing the One Leaf Commander NV100. This is a digital night vision monocular. It's mainly used to record your scope and for your hunts. Let's get to the unboxing and I'll tell you why I really like it. The box itself is pretty nice. It has that premium feel to it, kind of like an Apple product. Here's your manual, we'll go over this. Nice cleaning cloth. Now, I've already taken this out just to make sure everything was all right. So let's get right to it. Has a nice premium feel to it. I really like the way this company packaged everything. They were really efficient. Look at how they put the other eyepiece in here. And the carrying case is in here. It came with this tape to adjust the scope, make sure that it fits. I found that in my case, Velcro worked pretty well. Just one piece. Just in case you didn't already have a micro USB cable, there's another one. You got your Allen keys and this is your O-ring replacement. The battery seems pretty well built and it's Samsung 18650. Let me tell you why I love this little thing. First of all, look at the size. It's really nice and sleek. It's not the lightest, it's 12 ounces, but you won't notice it that much on your rifle. We're gonna be shooting the Savage 223. I'm gonna show you how to install it in a second. It shoots in 850 nanometers, the IR light and the spectrum. It's focusable. It's really nice and smooth. Here's the battery compartment. This is a sleeve, I have the 45 size here. We have a 42 and a 48. These are the different sizes for the eyepiece. This has a frame rate of 30 frames per second. And I like that the micro SD card can hold up to 256 gigabytes. And it comes with the micro SD card. This has a 32 gigabyte Kingston. The battery life on this thing, supposed to be six hours. Max, it shoots in slow motion. You can play it back in really slow motion, and that's also really cool. You don't have to do that in your video editing app afterwards. I say the best thing for last. The reason why I really like this is because I can use it on my bolt action rifles and take a second shot. If you know about these night vision devices, you've seen this type of profile before with other companies. When you're looking through the eyepiece, with these type of scope recorders, the bolt comes up and it hits right here. But not this one. It's just enough to clear, making this usable in the field. Beautiful. It has a camera thread down here so that you can mount it on a tripod and has a headphone jack. This uses a high quality Sony Starvis CMO sensor with the resolution of 1920 by 1080 and a high 4103 PPI for a crisp image. It has a long 70 millimeter eye relief that zooms with the eyepiece. The night vision illuminates up to 328 yards and it can withstand recoil up to 308 caliber. I'll put that to the test in this video. Now I'm gonna use this as a spotting scope. Those cows are 80 feet away. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. It's a beautiful, rainy, overcast day. It's 4 p.m. The cows are just relaxing, chilling, enjoying the rain. They're 80 feet away. Check out the exposure. This container is only 20 feet away. And there's a trailer at 800 feet away. It's 9 p.m. and this is the perfect opportunity to show you how good the Sony CMO sensor is. I'm shooting this video with my iPhone. That cow is only 40 feet away. It does lag a little bit. Let me throw the laser out there. 
That's the original video from the Commander NV100. That's what you get straight out of the box. Now let's try to improve the picture quality just a little bit. I'm going to use the iPhone tool and press the auto button. That's going to change some of the features as you can see here. I'm going to go to the sharpness. I'm going to put it all the way up and the definition just a little bit. Now check out the differences. Look at how good it performs in low light. This is a great sensor. That cow is only 40 feet away. It does lag a little bit. Let me throw the laser out there. Those cows are 65 feet away. These are a little bit closer. Really good performance in low light situations. Look at how the battery shows you how it's supposed to go with the positive end. Even the battery is labeled. This compartment, which holds the micro SD slot, the charging compartment, and the headphone jack, has the micro SD card labeled how it's supposed to go. I've had other night vision devices where if you put the micro SD card at a certain angle and you put it in wrong, it'll just fall right in. And for the rest of the time, you'll hear a little clicking sound and you won't be able to get it out. Speaking of the headphone jack, let's test it out. I always have my Bose headphones with me. But can it play music? No. I tried to put MP3s and video formats like MP4, MOV, and TS, but nothing seemed to work, only the videos recorded by the MV100. I don't like the video format that it saves it in though, TS format. My video editing app does not like it, and others don't like it either. But it plays on the iPhone and it'll play on your computer. It's a weird video codec H265 TS format, not the regular H264, which you have to convert to something like an MP4 because DaVinci Resolve or any video editor won't like it. I don't like that whenever you're recording and you press the zoom button, this will cut the video and it'll start a whole new video. And if you press it again and go to the third zoom option, it'll cut the video again and go to another video. If you're just trying to have one continuous video and you're pressing the zoom button in and out, just be aware that it's going to be cutting the videos up. Man, every time. Come on. This is the piece of Velcro that I'm going to use. Let me show you how it fits before the Velcro. Okay, you see that slack? So I'm just going to put this piece here. We're gonna have to snug it in there like this and then use your nails to kind of push it in as you slide it into the scope so that way that way it's a lot less slack so now i'm gonna tighten this with the allen wrenches make sure that everything looks as lined up as possible using nothing but my vision right there looks pretty good. So here, you click, you twist, ta-da, and it's off. To put it back the same way, you just find the groove, and it clips back on. And look at that, it's nice and snug. You turn it on, short click where the power button is. The green LED indicates that the power's on. On top of that, we have our microphone. Short click again to put it to sleep. Click it again, and it's ready to go. Click long, it turns it off. This button is to zoom up to three times magnification. Short click to bring up the menu. Long click the button to bring up playback of everything that you've already recorded. When you're in the menu, this is the button to confirm your choices. When you're not in the menu, Long click the OK button to take a picture and short click it to start taking video. Short click this button to turn on the laser and long click it to expand your viewing screen. Short click this button to switch between IR, daytime and nighttime mode. And when you're in nighttime mode, short click this button to go through the six levels of IR level magnification. When you first turn on the scope, this is the screen that you're greeted with. Let's go through the menu. So that shows the crosshair position, which is just a bit off center. You can use the whole menu key, up, down, left, and right buttons to match the crosshair right in the middle. For example, if you press the IR button on the left, it shifts it to the left. If you press the menu button, it shifts it to the right. 
So let's shift it to the right. And then we're gonna press the laser button to go up. And then menu again to go right. And we should be right there in the middle. The color effect, we're gonna leave on normal, but we have sepia and black and white. We're gonna leave it in full HD. The brightness is good. The exposure is good. White balance, auto. That's fine there. So is this. We're not gonna mess with these settings. I'm gonna set it to one minute. Off, sound record on, LCD slow motion off, but we have up to two, four, and eight times. Let's put the volume at 85. Clock settings, stamp, sure. Now. This is how I'm going to show you the videos from the NV100 from now on. These are slightly edited with my iPhone, and I'm going to show you how I do it in a second. But first, I'm going to show you raw, unedited footage and audio. Now I'm going to zoom in on the scope. That's all the way zoomed in. And I'm just using the microphone on the one leaf. Now I'm going to adjust the focus. That's the best right there that I can get it. To edit the footage, I simply use my iPhone software. I bumped up the saturation and the vibrance a little bit and the sharpness all the way up. I then slightly rotated the image using the iPhone tool so I can get it perfectly aligned. I set up another target at 150 feet. That's the target at 500 feet. And I can zoom in a little bit on the scope. That's all the way. Leave it right there. And that looks pretty good right there. Let's get this loaded and show you here what I'm talking about. Look at this. Clean through. Beautiful. That is exactly what I was looking for. Put this on safety. The target is at 500 feet. Shot number one. Did you notice that screen tear? Let's take another look. I'm gonna go in detail about what it is, what causes it, what one leaf told me about it, and how to fix it. Stay tuned. And again, look at this. The reason is that I didn't realize how oxidated these are. Look at that. And because of that, it got stuck inside the rifle. I put some oil and I'm trying to get it out. It's stuck right there. There's the first shot, that's where we hit. The Savage was unusable. I couldn't get the cartridge out, no matter how hard I tried. And I didn't want to damage the rifle, so I took it home. While I'm working on it, I brought the good old 243. This is a Remington 700. I got a nice Simmons, a 3 to 10 by 44 with the wide angle view on it. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. We're going to be shooting the Monarch 100 grain soft. So here's how it looks on the Remington 700, the 240. I want to show you what the laser looks like. So I'm going to throw the laser out there. You can't see it at this brightness. I set up a target at 250 feet under this first tree. Then another one at 350 feet under the second tree. I replaced the target at 550 feet with the cardboard box and a new target. This Remington 700 has a 20 inch barrel, so it kicks a lot more than your standard 243 24 inch barrel. That's going to be good for this test because with this recoil it can compare with the 308. 
That's the target at 250 feet. It's just a box and then right next to it is an oil container. Now let's look up so that you can see the exposure. That's the tree. We're going all the way up to look at the sky and the clouds. That's the target at 550 feet. That one is at 350 feet. And we have the camper there at 750 feet. Let's test the zoom out. This is the zoom function in times three. The scope is all the way down to three power. We don't have any zoom on it. This is so that you can see exactly how this scope recorder zooms by itself. We're back on the target at 550 feet. I'm gonna zoom in with the scope. This is all the way to 10 power. In order to get the target crisp, you're gonna to have to blur out a little bit of the reticle and find a happy medium. Like right there. I talked to One Leaf about that screen tear. They said that that's normal, that it's because of the recoil. So 223, it's getting it to screen tear just a little bit on the bolt action, but not on the AR platform. I just needed to tighten down scope rings a little bit better. I didn't bring the correct diameter scope ring. I haven't sighted the AR yet. That's why I have the target so close. This is a new scope that I put on there. Here we go. It's important to note that I didn't bring the correct diameter scope rings. I had to put some velcro and some tape just to get in tight. If I would have brought the one inch scope ring, this wouldn't have moved at all. Now let's talk about this problem, the squished image. As you can tell, this isn't a complete circle, it's more like an oval. This is what it should look like. Now this isn't a problem with the images, I can edit them on my software. But I haven't found a solution for the videos, I don't know how to put the correct aspect ratio, the image will still look squished. If you know the solution to this problem, please leave a comment down below. Now let's talk about how to fix that screen tear. This is the solution that I found. You have to put the scope recorder to zoom to times 2 or times 3. And for some reason, it won't screen tear that way. At least mine doesn't. I zoomed the scope all the way down to three power. And I put zoom times two on the scope recorder on the one leaf. Let's take a shot right there. There's a times two. zoomed in at times three power on the scope recorder so it actually looks a little bit better than powering all the way up on the scope because we can also go in on the scope this is all the way at 10 power and we can find a happy medium right there so that's 550 feet that's really nice so let's go back and find a medium ground so I'm gonna zoom out again I'm at the lowest power on my actual scope on the Simmons this is lowest three power that's awesome the scope is right there it has not moved at all those are our results with the 243. Pretty good if you ask me. Let's check out the performance with the 22 Magnum so that you can see what I'm talking about. This is the Marlin 22 WMR. The target is at 150 feet away.
Let's blow this up in slow We're motion. We're gonna put it up against the GoPro 8. And the slow motion video has no sound whatsoever. It's just Time's silent. too slow motion, here we go. There's that screen tear again. I talked to One Leaf about this and they told me that this is normal. The slow motion isn't designed for firearm use. It's more for nature recording. After we shoot a bunch of stuff, I'm gonna record my dog running so that you can see what this looks like. Times for slow motion. Bye, bubbly. Look at that. That's a 243 for you right there. Now I'm going to show you slow motion filming our dogs. It's 10 p.m. It's nighttime. I got the red light on, but you can't see anything out here. It's pitch black. We're going to look at the same targets that we saw during the daytime. That's the target at 250 feet. See the laser that I just turned on right there? Now I don't know how to adjust it. I have to figure out how to adjust it because I put the reticle centered right there. But let's turn it off for now. And I'll show you what the illumination levels look like. That's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So that's the brightest that we can get it right there. That's what the IR light zoomed in. I can zoom out the IR light. And that's what it looks like zoomed out. But let's zoom it back in. And now let's go over here and look at our target at 550 feet away. That's the one we were shooting earlier. It kind of rolled up a little bit because of the moisture. That's times two. And that's times three at 550 feet. Now let's zoom in with the scope. That's all the way zoomed in with the scope right there. Try to get it a little bit crisper. And that's as crisp as we can get it. That's the tree that's 350 feet away. The target was knocked over by the cows. The trailer is at exactly 1,000 feet. So that's really, really clear. Now let's zoom in a little bit, times two. Zoom in times three. So that's really doable in my opinion for 1,000 feet and if you want you can zoom in on the scope and that's all the way zoomed in on the scope. I'm hunting big hogs and raccoons tonight. After a 30 minute walk to one of the corn feeders I see a dark shadow and I figured it was a pigment. It was a big raccoon. But it was facing away and it wouldn't give me a good shot. I quickly noticed that the eyepiece was missing on the scope recorder. Somehow it had fallen when I raised the rifle. With the 243 short barrel kick, I have to have the eyepiece. So I'm gonna go back to find it. I look for a good shot, but the raccoon quickly moves back into the brush. And when I try chasing it, it took off running. I then took a 15 minute walk around the oak trees and I heard something in the brush. I quickly raised the rifle to find out it's a big raccoon. It doesn't seem to be bothered by the IR light. I find the correct shot. 
I'll take aim and fire. All right, we got us a nice little raccoon with the 243 and the one leaf. Let's go check it out. Oh yeah. That does a trick right there. The 243, look at that. Look at the exit wound with the 243. It looks like a lot, but it was actually just a little bit. Good clean shot. There you have it, successful raccoon hunt with the mv100 overall i really love this product even if i didn't get it sent to me by one leaf which i want to give a big thanks to for sending this for me to review i would definitely buy this with my own money and i've already recommended it to a lot of people thank you guys for watching make sure to like subscribe 